Hey, you want to talk about lost characters? So the internet has been going crazy with the concept of lost characters recently. These are characters that have been implied to always have been in that particular TV show, video game, or even movie. So some of these are real, and some of these are not, and we'll have to go through a bunch of them to figure out which is which. And we'll explain each one and what type of character they are. Because why not, I have the free time now, so whatever. Scrupulous Fingor. Th this guy just freaks me out. He's just really weird looking. And I don't like how he's pointing at Mario. Like, l like what did Mario do to him? He's said to have been an unused ghost enemy in the game New Super Mario Bros. It is alleged that Miyamoto was asked about this enemy in an interview, and then Miyamoto was just like, I am not answering anything about this guy. The hoax then went on to say that he became, like, unusually upset. That's... That's just imagining Miyamoto mad over an unused ghost in the game. To be fair, if this thing was real and was chasing after me in this game, I'd be pretty scared as well. Joking around, people seem to love this guy, and a lot of random fan art has been made about him, including a fake image of, like, him being in Super Mario 64 DS saying you cannot ignore me forever mario you know what like seeing his render in new super mario bros ds is a little like freaky but like seeing it in other games he actually looks kind of cute i kind of wish he was real now the mock turtle from alice in wonderland so this character is real not in the movie Alice in Wonderland, but in actual, like, the books, the Alice in Wonderland adventures. He actually does appear in animated form in, like, old vintage commercials, advertising Jell-O, and also in a live-action remake of Alice in Wonderland that kind of sucks. It's not the Tim Burton one, that, I mean, that one sucks too, but, you know. And to go even further, he does appear in a 1933 version of Alice in Wonderland, and it's kind of creepy, it's kind of weird. He's crying and singing in this camera-ripped version of the movie that I found on YouTube that makes it even more creepy. When it comes to the world famous famous 1951 version of Alice in Wonderland, he was supposed to appear, but he was pushed aside due to pacing reasons of the movie. It's actually kind of sad. Here's to the Mock Turtle, a character always seen as crying. Hey guys, before we continue, be sure to subscribe. If you do do it, it would be really epic, and I would really, really appreciate it. Okay, next up. Fedora Kong. Fedora Kong is said to be the most powerful Nintendo character in the entire Nintendo universe. So he actually appeared in an issue of Nintendo Power magazine, released in February of 1995, but never actually in a video game. People have made up their own lore about Fedora Kong, arguing that he's actually Donkey Kong's dad. Which is false because we know that Cranky Kong is canonically Donkey Kong's dad. Others believe this is actually an older version of Donkey Kong Jr., who was originally set to be in Donkey Kong Land for the Game Boy, but it never happened. I kind of find it funny how the wiki describes him as a more sophisticated version of Donkey Kong, which, I don't know about you, I think it's kind of an insult to Donkey Kong himself. Fedora Kong, although you never appeared in a game, you will always appear in our minds and in our hearts. Daniel Belcher So before Bob's Burgers came out, there was a pilot episode to the show. Despite its different art style, the pilot is very true to what the show ended up becoming. It has the same type of humor and characters, well, mostly the same characters, except for one difference. Originally, Tina, the oldest daughter in the show, was supposed to be a son. The show writers originally thought that having two sons for Bob just wouldn't feel right. In the pilot episode to the show, Daniel Belcher talks about how much his balls itch, similar to how in the first episode of the show, Tina talks about her groin itching as well. It's right here where I have to like really define what counts as a lost character. For me, a lost character is either they didn't exist at all, like if they were a hoax, or they did exist, but they eventually got scrapped completely. This is not real. It's just a dream. Please, please, wake up, wake up, wake up. Gumbly slash Graggle Simpson. This is the lost character that has kicked off this entire thing. He is said to have always been there with the Simpsons since the beginning. And he's a pretty old made-up character. He's dated back since 2011, being used on the 2chan image board. So there's this copy pasta that reads as follows from 4chan. That basically explains the entire, like, Graggle thing. Mad Graining had the self-insert character. He kept trying to shoehorn him into the show. Believe it or not, that is how Mad Graining sees himself. He wanted him to be good friends with Bart and replace Milhouse. The writers in the studio were concerned about how this would alter the show. And the design was too creepy, because he looks naked. Mad Graydon would always say that he just has long yellow hair. He wanted this character to be versatile and he could help any other characters with their problems. He pitched this one idea where he would help Lisa win a jazz contest. Apparently, Mad Graydon really regrets not playing the drums in high school and wanted his self-insert to be really good at drums. So his character would play the drums in Lisa's jazz band and they would win. 
The writers would call this character Weird Matt. When Groening learned about this, he made them change its name to Yellow Matt. The thing is, I don't think he ever gave it a name, so they only ever had a placeholder. The thing is, if Matt really wanted to, he could have pushed this idea through, but after no one wanted it or liked it, he gave up and scrapped the whole idea. There's still some art and notes referring to this character floating around, but Matt Groening is very embarrassed about this character. If you ever see him, do not bring up Weird Matt or Yellow Matt. God, how I wish this was fake, because this is obviously real. I mean, like, come on guys, you don't remember Graggle? Everyone else does, check out these posts. I used to dislike Gumbly, but after the season finale, he became one of my five favorite characters. Not to spoil that incredibly emotional moment, but Gumbly is more of a father to Lisa than Homer ever were. Honestly wasn't a big fan of the edgy humor Gumbly had in the early episodes, like that really graphic scene where he broke Milhouse's leg. The scream that played during that moment was too real and haunting. Oh my god, holy shit. Knowing the Simpsons, they'll probably actually put him in an episode and that's when the joke will finally die. Let's go home. We are home. That was fast. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty fast, Homer. Ooh, boy. Alright, next up. Concrete from Steven Universe. There is a reason why the cutting room floor is the cutting room floor. Okay, so Steven Universe is, you know, Steven Universe. Some people love it, some people hate it. Personally, I'm like mixed about it. I mean, I think some of the gems are cool. I think the fusion stuff is pretty neat, although it's just from Dragon Ball. And I also like Mayor Dewey, he's kind of, he's kind of based. However, in a world with so many characters, it shouldn't be a surprise that some of them are cut out from ever making it to the actual show, thus becoming lost. In 2017, a Steven Universe art book released, and in it, there was a character named Concrete. And once it was discovered, there was a lot of backlash because people depicted it as, you know, as a drawn stereotype of African Americans. To paraphrase a Steven Universe fandom post, she looks similar to an exaggerated Mammy character, who is completely coated in black. She has big white lips, and to those reacting to the controversy, looks incredibly similar to the way people would dress up in blackface. One of the describing factors, written in the notes of the art, is that this character could not read. Once again, this is an insensitive archetype of the Mammy character. Following the massive outcry, Rebecca Sugar issued an apology, stating that these pieces were created carelessly and it was wrong to include them. She also stated that she was deeply sorry for the hurt that she had caused. This is important to state, the person who drew this, Lamar Abrams, is African American himself. And the sketch was part of like this big brainstorming game where someone would draw an imaginary gem, and another person would like write down the name and the characteristics of the gem, you know, it was a big exercise. In the end, Rebecca Sugar approved this entire book, and all the drawings that coincided with the book, so she chose to take the fall for it, issuing an apology. I don't think the Crewniverse is like racist, they're not. I just think a little more attention should have probably been paid to it, and I completely understand why people got upset over it. I mean, if you've watched Steven Universe, you could understand that the show is pretty inclusive, more so than a lot of other shows. Personally, I think it's kind of ridiculous to accuse the entire crew universe of being racist, especially knowing the entire story. I sincerely believe the crew universe was not being malicious when they released this book and this drawing. Although this character was never meant to be on the show, they are forever lost and also has an asterisk of being one of the most controversial things surrounding the series. Chuck Cunningham is described as the true, original, lost character. Chuck appeared in Happy Days, a show that ran from 1974 to the 1980s. He played the oldest son of Howard Cunningham, who was a main character on the show. And he made some really rare appearances until the writers just made him stop showing up. Like they completely forgot about his character, but that didn't happen with the other kids, who would still continue and would appear in like episodes every now and then. After season 2, people noticed his absence and coined the term Chuck Cunningham Syndrome to describe early characters in TV who would be dropped early on in the show, with no in-universe explanation telling people where the hell they went. The funniest part about this is that Howard Cunningham, the, the dad of Chuck, supposedly has three kids at the beginning of the show. By the end of the show, he comments how proud he is of his two kids, indicating that Chuck never existed. There is no in-universe explanation, I guess, I guess he just was never there. He was just the imagination of every single character in Happy Days. 
What makes things even a little funnier is that in season 2, Chuck was replaced with another actor who looks completely different from the original Chuck. And then after that, the character was just completely canned. It's just another bizarre situation that some of these characters are actually real. They're not hoaxes. They're not part of like a Mandela effect. They existed. But they are the same category as a hoax because most people completely forget that they are real. Characters such as Fedora Khan, Chuck Cunningham are in the same category as Fingor and Graggle. If you want me to talk about more of these characters, uh, I guess get this video to 3,000 likes. Alright, subscribe. Bye!